Hello and welcome to the capital of Cambodia known as Phnom Penh. Today we're going to go and explore a little bit of what this capital has to offer and as well as visit some of its dark sides. Okay, we have to cross the road. I don't know how we're going to cross the road but we're going to be walking to a place that's about 400 meters away from here known as the S21 prison. Oh, hold on. <laughs> so if you don't know about S21 here in Cambodia, it's actually a prison. And Cambodia in 1975 had a guy called Pol Pot, which was basically like the Hitler of Asia and killed about 3 million people in four years. And it all kind of started here by the prison. So this is pretty much what the streets look here in Cambodia. They have like these tall buildings where people live in and then most often they have these little cafes down at the bottom. We also have a cafe over here. <laughs> but this is what we've come for, S21. What's interesting about this thing is that it was not actually built as a prism. Look at the walls already. Check how much barbed wire there is. They basically got two layers of fencing here with barbed wire. Do you think that's from now or back then? No, I think it's from back then. But there's no way you're going to be escaping that. Oh, I'm really starting to get an eerie feeling. Thank you. I couldn't. Okay. Alright, so we decided to get an audio guide just to better understand what happened around here as I think there's a lot of information that we need to take in. So there Leanne has started with number one on our audio guide. And then over here they have number two and then as you move through the place you can actually listen exactly to what happened in this area. So just to give you a brief understanding about Tol Sling, this S21 prison, is that it was actually a primary school before it was made a prison. So a guy called Pol Pot in 1975 was a communist leader after the Civil War. He managed to remove the previous government and basically became a Hitler. Now what he did is he removed everybody's possessions and you were all equal and the people that he wanted to kill were people that had ties to the old government or professionals such as teachers, engineers and etc. Basically anyone who was intelligent. And by doing so, what they did is they brought people to this prison and when they brought people to this prison they had to write down an affidavit of who they knew, who their family members were, if they were an intelligent person or if they were part of the government so they could find more people and kill them. So if you look here at the bottom, so this is uh, block A which was the most significant prison cells here of this whole uh, prison complex and because it used to be a school they used to have ventilations at the top over there. You can see on the second floor that there's ventilations over there. Yeah there's the ventilations up on top but here there's nothing. So here on the bottom ones, they actually block the ventilations and they've put the iron bars and like the people of most importance who were like linked to the government or like were really educated, they were brought into these rooms and this is where they were tortured and it was blocked so that the other prisoners couldn't actually hear their screams. So this is basically where the people were tortured. This is an old classroom. And here is a bed, I can imagine they were strapped to here yeah, and whipped and stuff. They were shackled, yeah. And then this was used for like their, their urine and their feces, like that was their toilet. And then uh, when they were tortured in here, one of the rules, they had like 10 rules that they had to follow while in this prison system. And one of the rules is that you could not scream out whenever you got like lashed or electrocuted. So you can basically see over here, there's actually a desk, which was perhaps a school desk in the past, but then these desks were where the prisoners were forced in order to write their confessions. And if the guards didn't like the confession that they wrote, they would scrumple it up and continue torturing them. So the people who were held captive here sometimes had to just write what the Khmer Rouge wanted them to write, and as soon as their confession was accepted by the Khmer Rouge, then they would be killed. It's actually a super weird feeling to be in here and know exactly what happened. 
Now there was about 20,000 people that were brought to this prison and only 12 survived. The rest were all murdered. So in writing on their desk their confession of who they knew and who they were and what they did, the ways of torture that they used in order to get the information out of people was like waterboarding, where they'd actually pour boiling water onto your face to confess, they'd pull out fingernails and well as give electric shocks. Right here is another form of torture and basically what you're seeing where the graveyard is right now, this used to be a volleyball court when this was a school and this over here was actually just a rope climb for kids but they used it as a torture method. Now what they basically did is they used these jugs full of water to either drown people in order to get them to their, write their confessions and then over here they would actually tie you by your arms and they'd put the rope straight through a ring up there and then they would pull you up in order to make you write your confession too. Here's other little jungle gyms in the garden that were left by the preschool. So if you look at these photographs, these were actually the photographs of the people who lived and worked inside of S21. And you can see how everyone's haircut was the same and all their clothes was the same. So that was part of the Khmer Rouge, that everyone had to look and wear the same things. So one thing that they did do is they did not shoot people because they wanted to save ammunition because it was so expensive. So the way that they actually kind of executed people in this prison and stuff like that was via axes or using garden picks and stuff like that. Very brutal, brutal methods in order to kill the people here. So the Khmer Rouge ruled over Cambodia from 1975 until 1979 until the Vietnamese came in and overthrew the government and they found this place two days afterwards. And when they found this place they found that all the documentation was destroyed but they found 14 bodies within the prison walls and these were the last 14 victims of this prison. Unfortunately when they found them they were dead so they created the graves here in order to commemorate them. So we've just walked further into S21 and you can actually see by these buildings how it was originally when they kept the prisoners in here that all this barbed wire just making extra sure that no prisoner escaped this like area. Here is where the prison cells were so they actually changed the classrooms into little cells and you can see it was not very well done but this is like what one of the cells looked like that is so small and they were chained here as well so they could not run just to make the walls extra strong they were using these little bars so that the wall didn't fall they weren't able to push the wall over the rooms are super super tiny just standing here just it feels it just feels so wrong and so eerie imagine this being your style like i can barely straighten my arms like this is crazy timing. So if you're interested in more of this, there's actually a movie called First They Killed My Father. It's directed by Angelina Jolie. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a book as well that really gives you good insight to everything that happened here in Cambodia. Hi, how are you? Uh, we can go, do you, can you go to Royal Palace? Where you go? Royal Palace. Okay, I know. Okay, how much? Two dollars. Eh? Two. Two dollars? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we're going to go and explore a little bit of the city and go a little bit more down towards the riverside and go check what it's like there. We are so hungry. You hungry? Yeah, and I want to taste some good Khmer food. Is it only me, but I think traveling a city in a tuk-tuk is way more adventurous than anything else. It truly makes you feel like you're traveling. Check this tuk-tuk. Is it like a futuristic tuk-tuk? Probably electric. I can't hear it. I also can't hear it, actually. Electric tuk-tuk. There's a normal one. How's it, man? <laughs> I think we are seeing more tuk-tuks here in Phnom Penh <laughs> than we've seen in India. <laughs> you can actually see here in a tuk-tuk. This is an aircon or a fan. It's keeping us nice and cool here at the back while we're driving. 
Because even though it's rainy season here in Cambodia, it's actually pretty hot. It's just hot air. <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah, you can see Daniel's hair is just blowing. <laughs> it's not an aircon, it's a fan. Oh. It's just a go when you want to system. Ah, oh, here's a Burger King. That looks like a good idea. Texas chicken, anyone? There's just like shops everywhere. Next to a tire shop, there's like a clothing shop, and then there's a fast food shop. It's just like random shops all along the side of the road here in Phnom Penh. Hey, there's a brew house, beer garden. One thing I've realized about the world, no matter where you go, everybody knows what a thumbs up means. If you give a thumbs up, they smile back. <laughs> I told you, just a thumbs up. Check the roundabout here in Phnom Penh. Check the entrance. Almost similar to what we saw in the temples by Angkor Wat. You can stop here, it's fine. Thank you, Angkor. Let's get out your side. The road's this side. Oh, there we go. Angkor, my man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. See, people in Cambodia are friendly. So you just stopped here on the side of the river here at the, what's the river called? Um, this is not the Mekong. Tongle Sap. Tongle Sap River. Tongle Sap River. That's where it is. And we actually went on the Tongle Sap uh, Lake in our previous video, right? Yeah. So this is the lake that actually fills up and fills the Tongle Sap Lake, and then. When it's dry season, then it empties out. Yeah, it flows both ways depending on the season. It's pretty cool. Check out boat, a massive wooden boat. Hey, a Cambodian pigeon. <laughs> Pigeons are all the same. It doesn't matter what country you go to, Danny. It's a Cambodian pigeon. Check, there's two Cambodian pigeons. Yo, that one's fat. Ooh, a shite. <laughs> so this is it, the Tonle Sap River. It actually joins down there to the Mekong River and then heads towards Vietnam. Oh, don't poop on me. Please don't poop on me. <laughs> Even though they say it's good luck, I don't want it. Oh my gosh, he has a whole bunch of Cambodian pigeons. <laughs> but you can see here, they have so many flags next to the river. This one with the blue on top and the red in the middle and then Angkor Wat in the center, that is the Cambodian flag. And I think the colorful one behind it is the Buddha flag. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is that one. And there's a third flag, which I'm actually not too sure what flag that is. So if you know what this uh, flag is, do let me know in the comments below. But it's, it's this blue one here. It's got like a marking in it but I, I don't actually know what this what this flag is for. Hi man, you good? Your skateboard, you can do a trick. Oh, almost, <laughs> can I try? <laughs> Let me see what skills I have. Please don't break a hip. I won't. <laughs> well, do you think I should be doing such stuff at 32? <laughs> Maybe. <Woo! laughs> <laughs> What's your name? My name is Duel. Duel? Samuel. Samuel. Yes. Lovely to meet you. How old are you? Yes. How old? You, you 10? Um, oh, no, I'm 12. You 12? Yeah. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> what you write here? You're a gangster? No. Are you a gangster? It's not my board. Someone gave me. Oh, someone, uh, someone gave, gave you. Board. Even 420. He can count to high numbers. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I was a skater back in the day, but I feel like my 32-year-old body is not that firm anymore. <laughs> Time for some food, right? I'm starving. Uh, beef lokla. Beef lokla, we can go to the near the independent monument we have. Uh, like a beef lokla, and then we have like a chicken inside. You want no, I, right? want, I want beef lokla with egg. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Near the, uh, inside the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. So the, this one I don't have. This I don't have, so I must walk that way. Yeah, we get a ticket to go there, I get this two dollar. Let me show you, it's not look like I bring for you. We're gonna go get look like? Yeah, yeah let's go get Okay. Oh, we're getting one of these things. Right, he's gonna take us to a look like place. 
So because it's from a local, I'm sure it's going to be good. Now it looks like it's basically like beef with eggs, which is a local Cambodian dish. Hi. Hi, you today. Good, good. Like the order inside, order restaurant. All the restaurants. Where you come from, bro? I come from South Africa. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, brother. Let's not have accidents, hey? Whoa. Let's go. Okay. What's your name, brother? I'm Mr. Chuan. Mr. Chuan. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Mr. Nice Chuan. Nice to meet you too, sir. I like your bike, your tuk tuk. It's cool. Okay, thank you so much. Let me show you a little bit this one in Royal Palace. Ah, I saw the Royal Palace. Yeah. Here we go. He's going to show us around now. This is one real like. Yeah, Tongle Sap River. No. Is this Mekong? Yeah. Where's Ton Les Up? That way. Oh, that way. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so this is the Mekong River and not the Ton Les Up River. So ignore everything we said before. <laughs> yeah, but the Ton Les Up is just a little further down there. Hi, right, man. Sure, you're carrying a lot of stuff. <laughs> no, I don't want to visit. I just want look luck. Oh, you look luck. I already visit the prison. I visit everything. Look like it's like a food. Yes, food. Food, yes. And I mock, you know, I mock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy. Yeah, I mock and look like. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. We want Cambodian food. Yeah. We've heard from so many people that look like and a mock is the best. So we cannot leave Cambodia without trying it. What's this? More fuel? What? What's this? Petrol? It's water. Oh, it's water. Yeah, it's water. Oh, okay. So it cools the engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have no idea where he's taking us to. We're just going with the flow. Hopefully it's not to the other side of the city. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> your tuk-tuk? Is your tuk-tuk? Yeah. Is there a fridge at the back? <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I think he actually has a fridge attached to the back of his tuk-tuk. Like, look, it looks like a cold fridge. <laughs> go, 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 go. go. <laughs> it's the race of the tuk-tuk. This is so noisy, though. Oh, is this one good look like? Yeah. Looks like fancy look like. No, no, no. It's not, you can check. It's not fancy look like. No, no, it's uh, food look like. Local look like. Yeah, you can have a look. Okay, like. okay. <laughs> oh, it looks like fancy, fancy place. Check out the entrance to this place. Okay, we were not looking for fancy, but he says this is where the good stuff is. Yo, this is yo. Here comes the most expensive look like <laughs> we have ever had. Yo, must be a friend of his that he's brought us here. Let me check this hotel. Yo, it smells like it's expensive. <laughs> Definitely not the local place, uh, but the tourist uh, place to come and get look like. Is look like only in the restaurants? Yes, only in restaurants on the way no have. Only in the restaurant, other yeah. places they don't have? Yeah, no, on the way no have. Ah, okay. Okay, so you dropped off our Mr. Chon driver. He says there's no local look like here, but I believe we're going to find somewhere, so. We'll be on the search for it. Yeah, I think we'll find. So I don't be eating look like in a fancy place like that. That was like ten dollars for local food. That's crazy. So I guess you gotta walk the streets of Cambodia here in Phnom Penh and find some proper look like. Very good instrument. Here's the barber. You can cut my hair. You able to cut my hair? How much? 10,000. How much is that one? Uh, 10,000, yeah. That's fine. I can cut hair after him? Okay. <laughs> well, I found a barber. Might as well cut my hair as well, seeing that I need one. I found this guy right here on the side of the road. It's an interesting little barber. How do you think he's going to cut my hair? Good. He looks like he's doing a really good job on this other gentleman. He's even got some musicians over here. Good music. Here's my trusty photo, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Hi, want to look like this? 
Doesn't seem like he speaks a lot. Okay, take a quick, easy haircut. It's the first one we're having on the side of the road. He has all his tools here. Does it look good? It feels short. It feels very short. That's good, that means I need to cut my hair in like two months time. <laughs> I've actually never watched Daniel get a haircut before, so this is very interesting for me to just be a, a bystander. <laughs> I'm sure it will turn out nicely though. You speak English? No English. <laughs> <laughs> How's the back? Good. I don't know how your hair gets so long though. Sometimes I wish my hair grew at the rate of Daniel's. I've got a feeling that by the time we walk away from here, it's probably going to be the best haircut I've ever had. <laughs> so far, I'm impressed. Just to give you an idea of how much hair has actually come off Daniel's head. Look at all of this. Baby, was I sexier on my wedding day or today? <laughs> you look pretty good today. <laughs> oh, good. I could. Oh. I could. Okay, I could. I could. So, you look so much neater. <laughs> yes, uh, probably the best haircut I've ever had. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you so much. You can keep. <laughs> I could. <laughs> Now we can officially go and look for some look luck. Look luck. Maybe he knows where to find good yeah. look luck. Where look luck? Look luck? Fish, look luck. Amok? Where I can find? <laughs> Nothing here. Okay. okay. I couldn't. Bye bye. Hi. Look luck? Look luck, Amok? <laughs> Nothing, yeah, okay. <laughs> Good. Hi, you know where I can get Lok Lak? Yeah. Lok Lak. You know Lok Lak? Food, where, where I can find, yeah. Hey? No way, okay. Ah, good. <laughs> feel like nobody knows where Lok Lak is, or they don't even know what it is. Puppy, 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 puppy. Maybe leave the puppies alone. <laughs> So I guess we're going to have to go to a different area to find look luck. But we also want to try and see if we can also take a sunset cruise down on the Mekong River or the Tonle Sap River. So I think we're going to head just towards the riverside, maybe see if we can find a cruise and then hopefully for dinner we'll find some look luck. Well we found some boats. So we're going to go on a boat ride for an hour and a half down the Mekong River. I don't know, I guess we'll figure that out. We're like right here where the Mekong and the Tongle Sap River meet, so we'll figure out which direction we go in. Hi, uh, Kanika, yes. Yeah, yeah, this way. We go here, yeah, this way. We go on the Mekong River or Tongle Sap River? Uh, two. Both? Both. Yeah. Ah, okay, amazing. I, I just go down here. Yes. Thank you, I couldn't. Okay, we'll go down these very safe stairs. Oh, that looks very good. Sleeping. <laughs> it does look comfortable. I wonder if they got one on the boat. Where do we go? I don't know. Do we cross another boat? I feel like I'm just navigating my own way around here. Let's take this one. Let's take this one. Are you sure this is well this looks this looks promising? This looks like the right one. There we go. Is this the right one? Yes. Ah, I think we have found it. It's not too bad boat. I have some chairs here. Where can we sit on top there? That's a good the view. I think the top is a good the view. Top one. Awesome. It's like a restaurant on a boat. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. So there we have the Mekong and then this side is Tonle Sap. Hey? Tonle Sap. Ton, Tonle Sap that way. Yeah, yeah. Tonle and then this one Mekong. Mekong. Okay. Uh, Tonle Basak. Tonle Basak. What's that one? Tonle Basak. Tonle Basak. Is that a different river? Yeah, yeah. Four oh, river. so there's four rivers? Yeah. Are they all joining here? Pardon, please. All four rivers, they yeah, join yeah, here? Yeah, They all join there? Yeah, yeah, join here. Oh, join wow. Here. Ah, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There's only one way to watch a sunset, and that's with a beer. Hanuman, we haven't had this one before. Nuts? No, thank you. 
Now, in fact, they give you peanuts in a bar to dehydrate your mouth so that you drink more beer. So don't eat the peanuts. So this piece of land right here, it's actually like a piece of land that stretches all the way from here up towards Cambodia. So it never actually meets with the mainland. So you can see there's actually a ferry. There's a car that's going to go and drive onto that ferry. And then if you want to cross over here to Phnom Penh, then you can use the ferry. It looks like these people here are actually living on their boats. And they've got some fish farms on the side. Oh, I have some jet skis. We did the wrong activity. <laughs> I must say it's pretty cool that we started our adventure in Laos on the Mekong and we get to end our last day here in Cambodia on the Mekong as well because I think this is going to be the last time that we see the Mekong as well. Marilyn Monroe, maybe. Yeah, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <But it's laughs> <from the front. laughs> so we are now busy entering onto the Tonne Sap River, and it's one of the only rivers in the world that flow in both ways depending on the season. What's the rating on the Hanuman beer? It's the one that you're drinking? Uh, 5 out of 10. It's alright, it's not the best one that I've tasted. I couldn't, thank you, man. Where did the sun go? It's it. Hop in, sweetie, into our tuk tuk. Thank you. We still have one mission left, and that is to eat lock lock. Lock lock. <laughs> so we have found a place that has got lock lock, or let's just say our hotel has got lock lock. <laughs> so we saw that on the breakfast menu. <laughs> yeah, so before we end this video, we have to taste that because. We, we need to complete the mission, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't have any other day to try it. Yeah, you can stop yeah. You can stop yeah. Akun. Akun, thank you. Thank you. Do you have look luck? Yeah, we have one. Yes, we can get one look luck. Thank you, thank Akun. You, and we finally have our look luck. That looks absolutely delicious. As you can see, they got an egg on top of the rice with the beef, and that's specifically what we are looking for. I am so excited to have some beef because normally on our travels we only eat chicken, so beef is a nice change. Oh, yes. And some of the beef with all the sauce. Mm. Mm. Was that worth the wait? That is so worth the wait. It's like the perfect steak with the perfect marinade and then rice and an egg. Mm. Mm. Yo. That is delicious. Yo. I'm so glad we at least managed to find this. This is fantastic. So when in Cambodia, you have to try Lok Lak. But if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and maybe even consider leaving a super thanks. I guess we'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, can I have this? Or are you aiming? No. This is so mine. <laughs>